name is Lauren Ager with the Omega Sci Fi fraternity here, and uh, I'm with Karen Sunt and also uh, Krista Keaton. We're here representing, uh, we're from the Filmmakers Lounge, and so thank you for the opportunity to get a chance to talk to you. I really appreciate it here during Black History Month 2012. Um, what I'd like to do, just for this opportunity just came up, is to kind of uh, learn a little bit about you gentlemen. Um, your, your name, where you're from, uh, perhaps your role, uh, perhaps even your thoughts about the film that's taking place today. Um, what would you start with yourself? Perhaps your name and where you're from? And I'm Dave Tolliver from Shreveport, Louisiana. And you would say that I came along soon enough to be on the shoulders of the original Tuskegee Airmen. They were there from 1941 through the end of the war, and we are privileged. My God, my God, put you, there you go. We're privileged among the four of us to have one of the original Tuskegee Airmen in our midst, and that would be Lieutenant Colonel retired Asa Herring. And uh, he's our mentor, and he's been one who's continued to show us the way. So without further ado, I'll have Colonel Heron speak to you. Thank you. Awesome. Well, thank you. Mm -hmm. As he said, I'm Asa Herring. I'm from Asheville, North Carolina. But I haven't been there living since I was in high school. I went in uh, to Tuskegee to, to college and when I was eligible to get into the Army Air Corps, I took the exam and uh, went ahead in. I've served uh, 22 years in the military and uh, retired, and uh, then retired from AT&T. And uh, right now, the only thing I'm doing is making rounds like this and playing golf. <laughs> not very well. Oh, not very <laughs> That's all. Thank you, sir. I'm the vice president of our chapter here. That's the Archer Ragsdale, Arizona chapter. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> I'm Kermit Payne, originally from Winston-Salem, North Carolina. And I'm not one of the original Tuskegee members, but I did serve with the U.S. Army and the U.S. Navy aviation outfits. And I'm a new member of the Archer Ragsdale chapter. Chapter. Okay. Awesome. Thank you, sir. Well, last but not least, I'm Ben Bruce. I'm uh, a retired uh, senior master sergeant in the United States Air Force, spent 26 years on active duty with the Air Force. I serve as a chapter historian. Mm -hmm. My job is, uh, again, I'm not one of the original airmen, but my job is to collect those stories, share the stories so we can keep the legacy alive. And it's been an honor to work with guys like Dave and Kermit and, of course, Colonel Herring, uh, collecting his stories and stories like that and sharing it with the younger population who have no idea this history took place. And also to reinvigorate the older folks, to remind them. So I always say that history makes us smart, but heritage makes us proud. And I'm trying to share both of those with mm -hmm. uh, future audiences. No doubt. So this must be a great event to have this, the, another film that's been created here that talks about the Tuskegee Airmen as well. And that, is that all part of the, the heritage you were talking about? It's all about? part of the heritage. I think in 1995, with the release of the first movie, uh, which was the Tuskegee Airmen, uh, it brought more of the mm -hmm. trials and tribulations in the complete story than you'll see with the new movie, which is Red Tails. Mm -hmm. But there's two things that's happening with uh, the release of the Red Tail movie, which is a Hollywood version of the story. Uh, George Lucas is also releasing a documentary, an 80-minute documentary that actually documents the entire story of the Tuskegee Airmen. So we can reintroduce that into the elementary and high schools. Mm -hmm. So with the, the opening salvo, salvo, if you will, which is the Red Tail movie, generating the buzz and the curiosity, and then they'll go back Monday morning to school and learn the real story and how this whole thing did take place. Okay, understood. It's a, it's a wonderful learning event. Mm -hmm. So really an introduction to getting into the history book. So obviously it's, it's going to be the quick and dirty version of what happened. Exactly. But now introducing, get that spark, that interest in our young people to go back and learn all the events that have happened as it really took place, not the Hollywood exactly. version, if you will. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> so let's learn, uh, let's be introduced to our <coughs> Tuskegee Airmen, just, just show it up. We, we know them. We had a chance to talk to them. Well, good afternoon. I'm yes, Colonel sir. Dick Tolliver, United States Air Force, retired. Yes, sir. And I am what you call a Tuskegee Airmen protege or mm -hmm. 
the second generation for a period of time from about 1953 to 1963, there were a group of us at Tuskegee who were trained by the original airmen, uh, two or three of which are portrayed in the movie mm -hmm. that the kids going to see today. And uh, we were trained and sent out to, to carry on the work that they had already begun. Mm -hmm. All right, excellent. Thank you very much. I've had an opportunity to meet some of Tuskegee Airmen when I was in Los Angeles a number of years ago. Uh, when I was part of LA chapter, I was in the Air Force ROTC program. One of the regional director of admissions for the scholarship recruited for the Air Force for the schools that were in the LA area. I got a chance to meet a guy named Roger Terry. Yes. Uh, yes. Really cool guy. Um, uh, we've had to kind of close the door sometime when we talk to him because he's a colorful metaphor, but uh, he's just a great, great character, yes. wonderful person, uh, very passionate. Yes, well, I think, I think, uh, I don't know if we're still on here. Yes. Uh, the passion comes from the experience. Yes, sir. And the trials and the tribulations and the desire to, to do well mm -hmm. in spite of what was being said sure. uh, about black people in those days. Mm -hmm. And I think also the passion comes from not just the slice of history that we're showing today in the legacy of the Tuskegee Airmen, but the contributions of black people in this country from the very genesis of this country. Sure. Going all the way back to uh, 1770 when Crispus Attucks was the first black man to lose his blood along with four white compatriots. Mm -hmm. And so when you have history that far back, it generates passion for every generation. Mm -hmm. And so what we're trying to portray to the youngsters today is that the legacy of the Tuskegee Airmen is indeed embedded in the history of black contributions to the very makings of this country and throughout. And that's where the passion comes from. Right, I It's a long-rooted history and it gives us passion for today. What's always amazing to me is when we have uh, especially in looking back at, at the historical films and talking to people who've, who've been from that age and that they fought to put themselves in harm's way to protect our country. Yes, um, they to, fought to fight. To fought to fight, exactly. Yes. And so they wanted to be there to support and to liberate and to uh, protect the country and its citizens and such. Indeed, it was but, their investment. Yes. They, they, you know, our forefathers. Mm -hmm. Our forefathers invested in the soil, the blood of America, African Americans, is, is embedded in the very soil and the mortar of this country. Mm -hmm. You know, black people built the bridges, they cultivated the fields, they built the skyscrapers, they designed the cities to, for instance, Washington D.C. and Chicago. Mm -hmm. If you go back into the history, you can see that it's the imprint of black men and women, by the way, mm -hmm. who were there, and so. When you look at how this country was built, uh, and thankfully, black people were able to pass on uh, these historical achievements despite the fact that there were no books to record it, there right. were no documentaries, it was by word of mouth. Mm -hmm. And so much of our history had to be passed on by word of mouth to the generations that follow. Right. And so now with the technology that we have and the various media outlets and so forth, we are trying to overcome a gap in presenting that knowledge to our youngsters, all kids today, right, not right. just African Americans. Right. But this history that we're seeing here today is a significant part of America's history, mm -hmm. not just African American history. Right. And so that's what we're trying to portray today as well. Right. I was talking to some of the youth earlier and they were really surprised to see that there really were Tuskegee Airmen, yes. that they really did fly these missions, they really did represent the country. It wasn't just a movie, some Hollywood thing, and that we do have a legacy that's here now, yes. and that they should take the time to learn and to engage in that conversation so they can learn for real how it happened, not just Indeed. what was in the, the Hollywood and such. Yeah. So, well, once again, thank you very much for your time, really appreciate it. Um, we have a number of brothers that are coming here now. I'm not sure what our schedule is uh, going forth this morning, but uh, anything else that we can add to the, um, that you like to, gentlemen like to express? Uh, Let me say this. Yes, sir. Uh, my hat's off to you uh, and your organization, the Omegas, who are taking the time to do this. Yes, sir. Our mission today in the Tuskegee Airmen uh, Incorporated is outreach to youngsters. Yes, sir. And so we have a shared vested interest there and opportunities. And so our 
compliments to what you are doing to make sure that the kids today are not just being entertained, right. but they're being educated. Yes, sir. No doubt about it. Yes, we're representatives of the Archer Ragsdale, Arizona chapter here in the Phoenix area. Thank you very much once again to the Tuskegee Airmen. Hi, we have John here with us. I want to give you your, your reaction to the film, Red Tails. Red Tails? My reaction is that it was a powerful film. Uh, being a lieutenant in the Army, uh, it was... Uh, it touched my heart probably more so than some other folks, maybe just on the military piece. Um, just the struggles, the victories, uh, moral victories, and then the uh, civil victories between uh, race, color, and uh, ethnicity. So, uh, But it was good to see just good young black men in the military, black officers, um, portrayed in such a way that can give hope to people coming into the military or those who are in the military nowadays. So that's the piece I take from that. Um, otherwise, it was a great film. I even shed a tear. I'll be man enough to, to admit that. Um, touches my heart that way. So uh, those are my feelings. Those are my thoughts. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, Thank no you very problem. much. Anytime. All right. How you doing? It's Leroy. I'm How you doing? Get my, you na my name is uh, Leroy Anderson. I'm actually a uh, 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 first lieutenant in the United States Army. Uh, engineer officer. Um, I can kind of like relate to what those guys were going through. Uh, we kind of went through some of the similar things when I was going through an engineer officer basic course. Um, I was going against the West Pointers and being an ROTC cadet. You know, they kind of like West Pointers were great. I actually got a, a nomination at West Point, but I chose to go to a HBCU instead and, particip and uh, compete with them. And I wind up being ranked top in my company. They, they thought I was, when they saw, heard my name, Lee Anderson, they thought I was Asian because of my grades. But when I got in there, they saw that I was a real black man with real ideas and real high aspirations to be in the military. So it was a good experience, and it was a learning experience at the same time. Uh, we appreciate you guys coming out and supporting us, and we look forward to seeing you at other events like this real soon. Thank you. Right, right. This is Carl Blunt, one of the organizers for this particular event. I want to get your reaction to... Uh, the film, and also, I really appreciate you uh, your support in getting Tuskegee Airmen here. Um, what was that like in terms of in terms of getting them here, and you know, to uh, to support our, our function? Here? Well, first of all, it was my pleasure and my honor. Tuskegee Airmen were very um, enthusiastic about coming and joining us. They had another event today, but they really worked very hard to work their schedules out to come here and join us. When they heard we'd have a younger crowd, more students, more kids, they really, really worked hard. Um, in talking with them earlier, they were impressed with Omega's relationship with the World War II effort. Um, one, of the, one of the airmen, Mr. Um, Tolliver, he said one of our fraternity brothers, Spanky Roberts, who took over the 332nd after Benjamin Davis, he pinned his first medal on him. Um, another one of the Tuskegee airmen, Luke Easter, who was in the booklet, who I think Lightning was roughly, loosely um, uh, based on, yeah. Um, he said he saw him before he died in Tucson. And as we started talking, we talked about the Omega's involvement in the military, the, uh, the outbreak of World War I. The highest ranking African American in the military was a fraternity brother, Colonel uh, Charles Young. Um, you look at, again, Spanky Roberts, you look at all these other scenarios. Um, so they sat down and they were just glad to be part of it. They were glad that we knew our history, they knew our, our rich history, and we were sharing it with the, with the kids. Setting this thing up was really, really nothing. The enthusiasm, um, momentum, the chapter came through. They sold the tickets, they got the enthusiasm going. All I did was put together the historical, historical background. Okay, excellent, excellent. So do you feel that the young people really need to know and see that we had African Americans who were patriotic, who wanted to put themselves in harm's way to protect this country. You think that's really important to the young people to see and hear that? It is very important. Nowadays, um, I sound like an old guy now, but all these video games put you behind a, 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 a pistol, a little box, and you, you kill people. But actually get in front of somebody, or somebody shooting back at you, you know. Also, too, back in the, in the 40s, it was still lynching black folks. Right. And for folks to go into the military to want to fight for their country, knowing they were going to get treated the same when they got back, you know, that, that takes a lot, a lot, a lot of stamina to get in a plane, to get behind a rifle, to get in a tank, and, and fight for some folks that you know really don't care about you. That's, that's just almost overwhelming to even think about. 
and these were highly educated um, pilots. You know, they came from various backgrounds. They all were college bound or in college at the time. So, you know, doctors and lawyers and, and different, uh, you know, folks with uh, strong backgrounds. So these weren't just folks really just off the field. These are folks who are really trying to educate themselves and uh, decided to go ahead and join the military and, and fight for the country. That is correct. They were our cream of the crop. And another thing that was loosely intimated during the film is the, the ground crew. The, 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 the ground crew had bad planes, they had used equipment, yet they deserve a lot of credit. They put these most intelligent fighters in these planes, sent them out, they had the utmost confidence in them they were going to come back. So not only do you have to take your hat off to the pilots, you have to take your hat off to the ground crew who made something pretty much out of nothing. No doubt about it. Thank you once again for your support, for putting this thing on, and we're going to look forward to the, the future events that are coming up here. The pleasure's all mine. Okay. Thank you, Brother Akers. Right, take care. What is this, Clyde? Here, we'll get your reaction, Clyde, to the film that you saw, Red Tails. Today, I was very proud and very happy to be able to see this film. I've wanted to see it for a long time. I'm a little bit of a historian, anyway, so it was very important for me to be here today and to share the time with my brothers and with the Tuskegee Airmen that were here and that were present. Because what it does is it gives us a sense of accomplishment to let us know that we can do anything if we set our mind, if we set our mind to it and stick to it. Now, for me also, because I build model planes, it's always been one of my dreams to build a squadron or at least five planes of red tail. So the day for me was also, like I said, I'm, I'm a historian. I also got to see the markings on the plane, what they look like. So now I have one model, so I had to go buy about four more. My wife's going to kill me, <laughs> but I'm going to get them anyway, and we I'm going to build me a squadron. So we won't tell her then. Oh, well, thank you. Don't tell her. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. But it was, thank you. Okay. We are a pleasure to be joined by Larry Ross, one of the main organizer here for this particular event. Well, my name is Lauren Eggers here with the Filmmakers Lounge. Larry, tell us about the Omega Youth Leadership Academy. Okay, well, uh, we're a youth development program, comprehensive. We work with uh, youth 5th through 12th grade, males of color throughout the valley, uh, bi-monthly workshops. Our, our primary objective is to get them to understand their civic engagement along with their academic enrichment as for attaining a college education. Okay, and so why this event? This event, because from a historical standpoint, sometimes in the school systems we don't have the opportunity to learn about uh, different cultural backgrounds that usually have like a victorious background rather than having opportunities to show light of some of the positive things that African Americans do. And this being Black History Month, we thought it was an awesome opportunity. Now, most recently, you went to USC and UCLA, I believe. Correct, correct. And so what was that trip about? Well, it was basically our, it's called the West Coast Educational Excursion. And what we do, we do workshops building up to that. And we were able to tour USC, UCLA, along with visiting the African American Museum. And the highlight was um, going to the College Expo, which we had over 60 universities and colleges. We had historical black universities there. And it gave them an insight of uh, what college was all about and getting a chance to visit some campuses. Okay, and what websites can we, uh, can we we look up to find out more about what the Omegas are doing as well as the Academy. Okay, well great. Uh, the Omegas, you can go to phoenixqs.com and you can find out about what the chapter is doing. Along there, there's a tab, uh, OYLA tab, and then you can follow us on Facebook at Omega Youth Leadership Academy. Okay. Wow, we have, we've um, touched and talked to all of the organizers for this particular event. And last but certainly not least is Jarrell Robinson. Uh, tell us um, how this event came about, Jarrell. Basically, um, Brother Ross with the Omega Youth Leadership Academy wanted to just take the young man to the theater, but I felt that we could do a lot more than that and make it a community event because it's a really important movie. Okay. So what did the young man, you think, learn from this particular film? Basically, a nice part of our history with regards to us having flown planes and fought in the World War II. These types of stories are not always covered in the history books that they see, so seeing it up close and personal um, should have brought more light to that for them. Okay, so this kind of sets the stage for some future things. Any ideas on what's going to happen in the future with the Academy? Basically, some of the things that we're going to do is we're going to do a symposium regarding the movie that they've just seen, and we're going to also talk to them about other astronauts like Ronald McNair, who was on the space shuttle Challenger that blew up, and he was also the foremost foremost uh, person with regards to laser technology and he was on his way to help work with um, President Reagan regarding Star Wars. He also was a, as an, an astronaut and he was inspired by the work of the Tuskegee Airmen. He also was a member of Omega Psi Phi fraternity. 
Awesome, awesome. So a lot of lineage here, a lot of history. We have current leaders, and of course, we're also dealing with the future leaders as well. So thank you very much for what you're doing and what you're going to, going to be doing. Once again, my name is Lauren Akers, and this has been the Filmmakers Lounge.